All right, people, here's the deal with this one. Much like last vlog, I'm coming to you from present day, AKA March 2018, to help fill in some gaps in the story. See, old me had time to record a little bit of stuff and tell you things like, I started this journey in mm, beginning of December. I started this fitness journey eh, beginning of December and my goal was to transition from this transition from a standard American diet, standard American diet, and eventually eat in a ketogenic way. But he didn't have time to tell you about a second DEXA scan or a VO2 max test, or even a one month update with the 360 view, all of which will be included in today's episode. So sit down, relax, take a load off. Let's get to it. Right, like I said, I had time to film a little bit of stuff and fill you in on things, but it wasn't real time. So some of those in the moment details probably got lost a little bit, which is kind of crappy. Yeah, it's a little crappy, I understand. But it's also kind of a blessing because I have gained a lot of insight since then. And I think I'm a little less monotone on camera right now, huh? Anyway, here's old me apologizing for even older me. I apologize. I really wanted to do more in depth week to week um, as I went along so that I could really just freshly tell you exactly how I was feeling every day, exactly what I was eating every day, how things were going, show you my testing when I did ketone uh, tests and also blood sugar tests. But like I said, that all just kind of went out the window. So here I am to do a full recap on week to week, what I felt, day to day what I felt. Um, I said in my last video that week one sucked, and I think this is a very important thing to know going in. But initially it was not nearly as difficult as it was the first time I tried keto. And you know why? It's because I knew what to eat. I had actually liked keto meals so much that I had continued to eat them. Plus carbs, which isn't a ketogenic diet, I know. Nonetheless, I still knew what foods I wanted to eat. I had certain go-to foods like macadamia nuts, pecans, bacon and eggs, avocado, sour cream, cheese, um, just those kind of things. I, I knew what I had to do. I mean, you can definitely wing it and go super simple. Because if you think about it, most meals are made up of protein, vegetable, and carb. So if you just cut out the carb, then you're pretty much already there. Just use some apps like MyFitnessPal or any other diet tracking app to really check out your macros. Because all you're going to probably have to do is add some fats. So find your favorite fats and stick to them. Uh, second thing I noticed, blood sugar levels in the morning went down dramatically. The first week I was very religious about testing my morning glucose levels, blood glucose levels. I kind of stopped doing it because my fingers uh, were starting to really be annoyed at uh, all the pricking that I was doing. I may have been going a little bit overboard on that. Eh, it's just kind of how I do things. Um, nonetheless, day one I started with a 125, which is pretty high. Um, generally, people that are non-diabetic like to be, like you like to see your blood sugar levels in the morning, fasted, um, under 100. And so 125 was pretty high. I continued on throughout the week. At the end of the week, I got something in the 70s. As someone doing this really to avoid insulin resistance, I found it's just another great marker to let you know you're going in the right direction. You don't have to do it forever, but I mean, getting a good baseline and then testing and seeing that you're progressing and then also trending, trying to figure out what time of day, what type of things trigger certain responses. It's, it's all very helpful information going forward. You can start to make better choices over time knowing those stats. I have been testing my ketone levels. I uh, did not really see anything super like stellar as far as ketone levels. I think it was low completely for the first week. Week two, I started to, I think I started to kind of get keto flu. Not really full blown keto flu, like bad headaches, really foggy. I did have some issues with, with my, tr my regular diet. Like I couldn't eat um, breakfast, lunch, and dinner like I normally used to. 
because I was on the road a lot and I just didn't have that opportunity to get breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That was good and bad. Um, bad because I wasn't fully keto adapted, I guess you'd say, and I was really craving foods. So those first couple weeks were really about just breaking the cycle and getting into something else, like an alternate eating path. I also tried to uh, institute intermittent fasting somewhat or restricted time uh, eating. So in general, I would try to push off breakfast until about 10 or 11 if I could. If I couldn't wait until 11, I would just take a handful of macadamia nuts, sometimes craisins, or, and uh, get a little snack in before lunch. Week three, finding my stride. Yes, finding my stride. Once I got into week three, those carbs were slowly slowing down. I was getting less and less carbs. I was starting to feel more energetic. I was feeling lighter. I knew what to eat. I was getting a routine, on and on and on, and all kinds of good things. When I got to that point, I was really starting to feel like I needed to get out there and start exercising because up to this point, I had not. I had not done anything. It was 100% diet, which is 180 degrees from what I did in past years. I always overworked before I dialed in my calories. So this year, trying to make it stick, I decided to do something different and I went completely with diet before even attempting any exercise. And I'm not gonna give any spoilers, but I would highly recommend it if you're gonna start the ketogenic diet. Whew. All right, now that all that recap stuff is out the way, let's find out what's actually going on with my body because that is the whole point. That's the whole point I went to go see JD at DexaFit New Orleans because I wanted a true baseline on how fat I was, where that fat was located, and if eating fats was gonna make me fatter or if it was gonna cause me to have more visceral, more organ fat, or if it was gonna make me more out of shape, right? We, we need to figure out if this is just some kind of thing just being spread on the internet, some kind of cruel joke, or if it's true reality. I mean, I can say from my glucose test that they're going down and those that's going in the right direction, so there might be something to that. But without a second DEXA scan, without seeing the scale, without seeing any kind of results, how are you gonna know, right? I mean, you could start seeing weight loss, but inside your body, Things could be going horribly wrong. So I wanted to put all that to rest. So let's go catch up with old old me going to Dexafit New Orleans. Yeah, let's do that. Moments later. Uh, so very first number one, look at it's there. So last time it came in about 33.6, today okay. about 32.4, so not too bad, you know. That's like in a month's time, less than yeah. a month's time, you know. Okay. Um, so you have about, oh, okay, so the, the best thing about this is that, let's look at these changes at, the, at this last page. So you actually dropped about nine pounds from that nine pounds, five and a half of that is fat, and just a little bit of that is from your lean, lean tissue. But remember what I told you, I think I might tell you, the lean tissue, take it as a grain, with a grain of salt, right. because um, you know, that does include some glycogen stores too. So if you've been on like a low carb diet, mm -hmm. it's gonna uh, detect that you're gonna, that you drop in the lean tissue. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, visceral fat went down a good bit too. So you went from three and a half down to two and a half. Oh, that's always good. That's always good. And what would be like ideal to be seeing? This or that? Mm -hmm. uh, you actually want to be zero. Zero? Okay. Yeah, you want to be zero. You can actually, you can still have a good 30%, mm -hmm. but you can still have zero visceral fat. Okay, okay. good. And that's good. just, um, you know, eliminating most of the toxins in your foods, um, the preservatives, uh, try to stay high in your fiber, drink lots of water, and that's going to um, decrease that visceral fat rapidly. But down here we can see 
uh, that you belly fat went down the whole panel right there. Nice. Very good. That's that fish fat once again. Almost the same. Almost a pound on that. Mm -hmm. Now, would that mean, being that they're almost a pound here and a pound here, does that mean that most of it is visceral fat, or is that just kind of going back to this? Uh, no, that's actually two different fats. You, you lost... So I lost almost two pounds of fat then, exactly. technically. Okay, great. Yep. Well, I was very, very surprised at that. I mean, okay, I wasn't surprised, surprised, but I was pleasantly surprised that I lost a pound of organ fat. A pound! One pound of organ fat. Just the organ fat. I mean, yeah, I lost weight overall on my entire body, but that's the, the killer, you know? He actually said, the silent killer is visceral fat. That's the one you don't want to see. And it's the one that diminished. It's one of the greatest percentages that diminished. I think that's freaking awesome. Proof of concept, right? Proof of concept is what this is about. It's not about just trying to get some confirmation bias. It's actually getting hard data to prove that this is actually what's going on. And it's proving it. Poof. Poof. Right? Okay. Okay. That's cool and all. But we're not done, right? We're not done. I actually went and got a VO2 max test because I wanted to see what my VO2 max is because I love cardio. Why? Quick disclaimer, I've never done a VO2 max test before in my life. I didn't really know what it was going to be like, so I kind of feel like I cut out a little bit too early, and hopefully it didn't skew the results too much. Again, I haven't worked out at this point getting this VO2 max test. I hadn't worked out for like six months prior. I hadn't gone on any runs, and I'll try to find my most recent run before that and post it up here. Is it there? I don't know if it's there. Is it there? Okay. There you go.
The very first number we want to look at was wow, your heart rate was 203. That's crazy. That is, I don't know. That's crazy. Highest I think I've ever seen it running was like maybe 196, 198. Okay, damn, yours jumped up pretty high. Uh, how old are you again? 34, about 34. to be 35. Oh wow, see, the 220 minus 35. It should be like 190. 185. 185. How the hell you took up that high? I don't know, I guess you want to test me again though. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I, I kind of do. That's, that's, that's kind of weird. Not today. No, I hate you. Definitely another day. Okay, let's um, let's go on. Let's look at a little bit more stuff here. So it's showing that your maximum heart rate is 203. I'm still boggled with that. Um, but in a minute, um, your heart rate goes down to about 172. In two minutes, it will go down to 157. So you, it's a decent recovery. you have a pretty good recovery time there. Um, your, your aerobic threshold starts off about 143 beats per minute. So that's when your body starts burning fat for fuel more efficiently. Gotcha. But when it reaches to 156, that's when it starts burning more glycogen stores mm -hmm. there. So between these two numbers here, and I will show you back up here, the monitor zone, between 143 and 156, see it right there. Right. So that's your kind of like your fat burning zone. This Cal is this is calories pro. Mm -hmm. That's showing there. Yep. Okay. Cool. So if you were to run at the top end of your monitor zone, like 156, in an hour you burn that 603 right there. Gotcha. Okay. But uh, whenever you do an HIT, you want to take it above 156. Mm -hmm. Okay. So anywhere between here would be considered your your high intensity zone. Okay. okay. Um, your VO2 max is kind of low okay. Okay, compared to your peers. Um, it shows that your VO2 max is 35 uh, kmm, which is uh, kil milliliters um, per kilograms per minute. Okay. okay. But on the national average, it shows that you're a little low right there. Okay. okay. But you can always improve. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, a VO2 max baseline. There you go. But, drum roll, please. That was a horrible drum roll. Anyway, it's time for the month one 360 update. Side by side comparison of fat me to potentially less fatter me. Enjoy. people i think that's about it for this one i really hope you enjoyed it i really appreciate you sticking around through this entire vlog i know they have been pretty long episodes because yeah it's been a bear to edit but i'm really enjoying putting this out there sharing it with you if you've made it through this video you're a legend thank you so much for watching as always smash that like button hit subscribe and uh yeah i will see you on the next one peace